Confused about what career to choose? Not quite sure of the range of study and work options compatible with your personality, aptitude and interests? Welcome to Career Cafe, where we give you a ringside view of an exciting career each week. Together, we shall explore the pros and cons, the ins and outs, the programs and prospects, all the stuff you need to make an informed and successful career choice. Hi, I'm your host and career guide, Parveen Malhotra. And on the menu today, we have careers in vocational fields. India has a large population base of 1.22 billion with a demographic shift in the working age group, 15 to 59 years. While the overall population is expected to grow at 1.4% over the next five years, the working age group is expected to grow at the, almost double the rate at 2.15%. And although India's official unemployment rate was pegged at 3.8% last year, but as always, averages hide many stories. Unemployment among graduates is 9.4% and 10% among postgraduates. Among women, it is 25%. Ironically, on the other hand, employers are majorly concerned about finding good and trainable workers. So what if you're not academically inclined or don't or can't go for higher education? It's by no means the end of the road for you. There are lakhs and lakhs of jobs out there across fields and industries if you're prepared to arm yourself with some basic skills and a can-do attitude. And to discuss all these opportunities and what it takes to stand on your feet and become gainfully employed is Savita Singh, National Head Placements at Team Lee's IIJT. Savita's professional career spans over 24 years of corporate exposure in sales and channel management in training and education industry. She's worked with Uptron, Aptec, NIS Pata, Bharti Resources, Centum Learning. Besides organizing placements and internships, she tracks the students' performance. Her work includes interacting with industry bodies, corporates and local industries, conducting job fairs for external candidates. Welcome to Career Cafe. Savita. Hi, Hi Pleasure. Yeah. So w what an exciting uh, field we discussed today, vocational. I mean, there are lakhs and lakhs of students who can't or don't wish to go for higher education for some reason. Right. And it's not the end of the road for them, isn't it? Absolutely. Huh? Absolutely. So when we talk of vocational jobs or vocational careers, what all comes under its purview? See, when we talk about vocational studies, I think uh, this covers anything and everything which is there under earth. Uh, because professional education would be more like medicine, your structures, and medicine, engineering, law, and lawyer, and, and other things. things. But vocational is a bigger spectrum, bigger umbrella, which might start right from carpentry to mason, to beautician, to people who are now getting into BPO sector, back office operations, uh, a lot of females who are now getting into jewelry designing or maybe jewelry shops in the sales force. So it could be anything and everything plus few uh, areas like your finance accounting, which is again available in all possible industries and all sectors. So it's a huge even umbrella. Even technical even jobs. Even technical jobs. Yes. So that's how the vocational industry is huge. There are about, I think, 600 to 700 things which are already being uh, marketed as vocational courses. Uh -huh. A lot of people are now uh, making people employable. So it is more of giving right skills to the candidates so that they are more employable and they are able to get jobs easily. So that's the idea. Yes, and in a country where, as we saw in the introduction, about 10% of graduates and postgraduates yes. are unemployed right. or underemployed. Right. I think uh, at least if you've done some kind of vocational course, you are 
uh, you know, ready to start working, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. And the Absolutely. travel and tourism sector, for yes. instance, huge hospitality. hospitality. So these yes. are these are. So you think of any uh, job, and I think it all comes under vocational uh, studies. So that's the kind of mammoth uh, openings which are there. Uh, SHM uh, figures, if we talk about last year, again it, they, it uh, says that about 15 million jobs which are, were uh, generated last year, out of that 75% required vocational education. Wow. So that's the kind of percentage of requirement which is there in the market for these kids to actually grab. And the nicest thing is you can do these courses straight after school or right. even a little before that, no, after class 10 or 8. 10, 10th class yes. dropouts, 12th class dropouts, even while pursuing your graduation. Yes. Yes. In fact, that's one thing that I keep telling all these students that keep continuing your education yes. because that's important because when you go for a job, you might get a job immediately, but moving ahead five years down yes. the line, 10 you might years, hit a ceiling. You might hit a ceiling so, yes. and the, these certificates might be used full then so it's always better to keep continuing your also it academy. furnishes your mind so yes. I think overall you know in a world that is so interconnected right. you know I mean if you know what's happening in other aspects of the world and areas of the world it's all so it's very useful better. It's always so better. tell me what is it I mean uh, we have figures like four crore people as we were discussing before the show four crore people registered with the employment exchange right. and barely four lakh Three lakh, three lakh, lakh. Uh, managed to figures, get employment. Figures, Look at the I mean, gap. Yes. So, and on the other hand, industry and employers are always cribbing. They say, "Hame right people nahi mil rahe, yes. nahi mil yes. rahe." Yes. Ye mismatch itna kyu hai? See again, uh, the uh, what we were discussing that when we talk about employment exchanges, I mean this was started by government to offer one place where all the youth can go and register and they can get jobs from there. But that has become so mammoth that it becomes tough for them to uh, get the placement. And this is how a lot of uh, public-private partnerships are now yes. getting into it. Even we have acquired one Karnataka employment exchange where we are trying to provide job openings to. All all the candidates were registered. So you can imagine the gap from 4 crore to 3 lakh people actually getting a job in a year. So that's the huge gap that uh, needs to be worked on. Employers are always looking at right kind of candidate, yes. that we have these 100 openings. Can you give us the right candidate? When you speak to candidates, they say, we want a right good job, you know, which is a high paying job, which is an idle job. So the idea is all these vocational uh, training institutions institutes are now working towards matching this requirement. So when we speak to the employers, we always talk the evolution of this industry uh, has uh, been such that when you talk to the employers, they say that we are ready to pay to get a trained manpower, but we will not invest money in training uh, the people that we hire. When you talk to the candidates, they say that we will not spend in getting the training done, but we can pay to consultants to get a good job. Oh God. So mm -hmm. that's again another challenge that we have uh, with us. So how do we you take care that both these people are kept happy and employers get right people, candidate gets their so-called dream job and they start their career. Yes, otherwise this so, whole thing of square pegs and round holes and you know, 90% uh, people being yes. dissatisfied with their work. Yes. I mean, that will continue to happen. Yes, yes. So, so. now uh, when you talk to employers, what is it that they say about young people today? I mean, uh, uh, skill, skill trained people. Is it that they find that the skill training is lacking or what, what else? Are, are they looking for things beyond skills training? See, first immediate requirement is skill training. So hmm. that's the f uh, foremost thing. Other than that, the simple soft skill training. I think that's becoming mandatory oh, yes, because, absolutely. and this is how if you talk about schools, now it has gone up to school level where schools are inculcating a lot of these soft skill training, even colleges. So it has now started as a structured training program in most of the academic curriculum. Now people who are not getting into that kind of a structured academics, they need to start thinking about this at how important it is. When you're going for a front end job, yes. uh, the employer or the HR manager who's 
is taking your interview, he is not looking any certificates that you need to provide. He is looking at two hands who can come to my office from tomorrow, be on the job and start working because gone are those days which were there during our time 15, 20 years back that we used to have a probation period oh, yes. of three months, six months where we were trained, groomed and then you the want job, yes. them to hit the now, road running. Now, yes. yes, now they want immediately. So what they require is a clear uh, thing from students where these people have to be very focused on willingness to work and clear mental ability. Just these two things. Confidence. Confidence. That's Absolute it. confidence. That you, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, this job is something that I'm here for and I, you just give me a chance and I'll show you results right from day two. So that's the confidence that they look for. Nothing else, I think, in this job skill uh, training uh, part, I think this is from the employer's point of view. From candidate's point of view, you don't know. Uh, I mean, you are dreaming that, yes, computer is something which interests me. But once you start working, then you realize in computers, whether hardware is what is interesting, whether software okay. is what is interesting, whether just sitting and uh, surfing the or the uh, you know, net is what actually interests you. So just by saying that computer interests yes. me is something which you need yes. to go further. So that you'll do only once you start working. So the second thing that I think the student should keep in mind if you get a chance to work and do some kind of internships or trainings grab that opportunity Absolutely. and keep moving it's like being paid to learn yes, no? yes i think yes. so important yes so important and i think hospitality industry there are a lot of organizations with government and private partnership where they are giving these kind of that you yes. come do the course with us right. do an internship and you'll get paid for that. Yes, which like ITDC, ITDC has this yes. Hunar Se yes. scheme, so which is also, fantastic. So we are yes. also now tying up with yes. them to offer these yes. courses. Yes, actually they pay IHAD you, they centers. pay you to yes. do the course. 1500, 1500 yes. is a stipend, Plus which is lunch and, uh, and, and they find uniform. you a job, and, and uniform. uniform, and so they get you a job, and they get you a job. So Absolutely. So I think these are things now which are, you know, making life easy from the student perspective. Right. So what they need to just look at is just keep moving, keep taking, and uh, riding the yes, uh, and bus. you have to be willing to roll up your yes. sleeves and work. And work. Yes. No, I'm not saying that my work is not done. You know, right. I think you should be ready to do anything, anything. and everything because yes. that's how you learn. Yes. Yes. That's how you learn. So I think your attitude makes a lot of yes. difference. No, whether yes. because if there are two candidates or ten candidates and an employer has to select one, it's the attitude finally that clinches yes. the deal, yes. isn't it? Yes. And the confidence level yes. and mental ability that, Beautiful. you know, sir, I mean, give a job. And we keep hearing a lot of these HR managers who after the interview come and just pinpoint that, you know, those two candidates, they were so energetic, they were so charged. I think we should give them a chance. So I think that's what in that 10 minutes makes a difference. Absolutely. So Absolutely. So, and I think now the newer courses, they all emphasize on this, on this these part skills. as well. Yes. Yes. Hmm? We'll take a short break here. When we return, we look at the outlook and prospects of vocational careers, so stay right there. Welcome back to Career Cafe. We are looking at vocational careers and with us is Savita Singh, National Head Placements at Team Lee's IIJT. So Savita, let's tell our viewers about the various kind of study options or training options that are there in vocational fields. I mean, we have the traditional uh, ITIs and the polytechniques, etc. So let's, right. you right. know, can you throw more light on those? Yes. So, see, those are one options which are available. Uh, if we talk about figures, uh, there are about 256 lakh people who sit for class 10th exams every 256 year. 256 lakh people. people. So, mm -hmm. out of that, about 105 lakh fail. They are unable to clear the exams. So this is how all that change which is happening in the examination system. Uh, apart from that, you have 160 lakh people who sit for class 12th exam. Again, out of this, about, one eight, about 80 lakhs uh, are able to clear this exam. So the people who clear out of that, roughly about 50 lakh are the ones who are able to get into some college education or degree programs. What happens to the remaining 
uh, crowd which gets kicked out at 10th level or 11th or 12th level and are unable to get into an uh, organized degree program. Not only so that, Savita, what about the lakhs who go into, uh, you know, undistinguished yes. uh, bachelor's degrees? So I'm you know, which are not even worth, yes. We are not yes. even talking yes. about that. We are talking yes. about this huge yes. segment which are, you know, dropouts due to whatever reason that they were unable to clear one exam because of which they can't move ahead in life. So vocational studies is a great uh, opportunity yes. for these guys to get settled and kick start somewhere, you know, to actually, so whether it is financial courses, whether it's accounting courses, whether, whether it's English courses. courses or soft skill courses or technical ITIs. So everything is available for them to grab and start. And this is what needs to be pushed to these guys that you take. And I think there are organizations which are ready to take these students. Yes. They don't have any set mind that we want only graduates or we want only 10 plus 2 kids or we want 10th. There are opportunities which are available for each of these segments. It's just that we need to know and we need to approach the right people and take charge and keep moving in life. So this is what we are also doing at our organization where we have taken up these employment exchanges. We are even we are the first ones to start a vocational education university in collaboration with government of Gujarat. So and we are in talks with other states also to roll out these kind of programs where associate degrees would be rolled out. So these kind of courses are available. So we would request the viewers to look for these courses and start. Yes. So uh, and as far as your academic studies go, nothing not stops you. Yes. Continue, Just continue, continue, continue. I mean, you have national uh, open schools which are available right. where you need not attend classes. You have Same correspondence, universities. correspondence yes. courses which yes. are available. So keep upgrading your academic skills and keep taking these opportunities and keep moving in life. And the other wonderful thing is now suppose you go to an ITI. Okay. Uh, from ITI, you upgrade to a polytechnic right. diploma right. course. Right. So from certificate to diploma. Now right. from diploma, you can go into a degree. Thank you right, there. Right. So I think there is really, I mean, all this kind of... So keeping these things in mind, this was the idea of getting into these vocational education universities where you don't have a set pattern. Right. There's an exit any time and every time. We are even getting into keeping assessments at entry level and exit level so that you know what are your strengths and what are your skill gaps which mm. on which you mm. need to work and polish so that you are more placeable or more employable. Because right now the problem is more of unemployability. Mm -hmm. rather than unemployment. Yes. So that's something yes, that yes. needs to be pushed Very to all true. these uh, candidates, that this is where the gap is. Even with engineers, graduate yes. engineers, yes. they are, I mean, beyond 15 to 20 percent, they are not only unemployed, but unemployable. Yes. And that is what yes. we need to address. So that's a bigger problem yes. of unemployability rather than employment. Yes. So this is another thing that we need to uh, keep talking in all forums and keep grooming these uh, kids for. The other thing that's very important is that whether it's a professional stream that you're in or a vocational, you must keep upgrading your skills. Right. No? Right. Right. Because how quickly technology makes things, uh, renders things obsolete right. and new things. Right. So you must sort of keep an eye on what's happening. So and industries like what we were discussing, the photography industry, yes. the music industry, I mean the, the tapes and CDs and VCDs, uh, they're all gone. History. Now now you just download yeah, digital. everything on everything your is digital. cell phone and uh, you are uh, connected. I mean like Facebook. Pho photography and, uh, for instance, photography, it's all yes. digital. Yes. Uh, you need to be equally skilled with the camera as you need to be with say a Photoshop and a Corel yes. Draw. Yes and multimedia and yes. stuff like that. So people who have kept pace with these technology and are ready for learning are the ones who are surviving. Otherwise, you are just thrown out of the industry, yeah, any industry we talk about. So that's another thing that these youngsters need to keep in mind, that that constant upgradation and learning so is important. So obsolescence doesn't hit you. No. Yes. That, that, yes. That's so yes. important. That's important. So and uh, what are the, the, I mean, and how these things have evolved, no, over the years? I mean, earlier vocational jobs were very, considered very low, and today you have the BPOs, yes. and you have the medical transcription and the legal transcription, and I mean, yes. just about You think everything. about anything and everything, and it's all there. So tell me, when employers talk about soft skills, 
are they all looking at english language no no good that, that you is brought up this point because i keep meeting lot of students from smaller uh, cities see the problem is that in metro cities you have huge opportunities anybody and everybody gets a job within 15 20 days the moment you start thinking about a job the problem happens in smaller cities where opportunities are less people don't know how to approach where to approach and how to start yes this communication skill and language is a problem but there's no end to the world because we have lot of these organizations who are ready to hire people with local uh, language also so whether you know kannad or you know tamil or you know bengali or you know hindi there are jobs available what you need to talk during your interview is your confidence and your willingness to take up the job if there are lot of organizations yes where it is mandatory for you to know english yes, language yes in the services sector then, where yeah, it's fine people I mean, facing if you if you have a problem in that i mean maybe you don't fit into that segment but, but there are a lot of uh, organizations who don't bother i mean you uh, see all these telecom shops which are selling handsets mm. i mean you have a shop which is in the swankiest uh, mall where they might require a person with good english and with good communication skill but there might be a shop which is in a small uh, place where they don't require right. such a right in fact they require yes. somebody who so can it's communicate the same organization the... yes everything is same but the requirement is very different so this is what you should keep in mind so you should not just rule out that i'm not fit for this job or i'm not fit for this organization because that organization might have outlets in different uh, cities yes. i mean the same local. mall yes a mall in gurgaon yes. might require Yes. that you know english and you can yes. do full fine english yes. but i mean if you yes, if it in is a smaller, in a smaller uh, area or a, you know the side uh, ncr kind of a place maybe a simple hindi or a simple uh, local language right, is something right. that looking and at now with fdi coming into the retail sector yes. this could be a huge requirement you know and people in uh, bengal in bengal i think bengali speaking is something which every employer is asking for right that can these people uh, communicate in a local language so that's something that they can really look for so i think language is not such a big barrier now in case you are willing yes, to take and also you don't require the ren and martin kind of grammatical, grammatical english. english you just yes. need to be able to communicate, communicate what you want to yes, say yes, yes. so like ccd is one of our hmm. employers and there also it's the same so a ccd outlet which is in That's a cafe coffee, cafe day. coffee yeah. day which is in a bigger uh, city might require people with english uh, speaking but in a small place they just require that we'll teach you those basic words of etiquette thank you sir and please come in and what can i get so those things if you're willing to pick up we're right. ready to hire yeah. you so so tell me sir the, what are the trends for the future i mean i say employment and hiring trends in the coming years see this is what uh, we uh, just discussed that people should be ready to take this change because it's going to be a very fast change so uh, the youth and the youngsters should be ready to pick up this fast when we talk about uh, facebook twitter and linkedin i think they have to be tech savvy they, there's yes, nothing yes, yes. they have to know how to use computers because if you have to make your report and send at the end of the day there's nobody in your office who's an assistant who would do it you're required to make the reports and send it so learning upgrading moving ahead fast and keeping with the technology is the most important thing in any industry and any vertical so that needs to be kept in mind so whichever industry we start our uh, life with but you should be open and i think there are a lot of uh, things like when we talk about accounting or finance which is in all the verticals so yes. i might be working in one organization today but there are chances that i can move to uh, uh, different organizations so i should be open for what is happening around so reading and being abreast with the latest that is uh, important um, news and also when it comes to choosing institutions from where you train right. do your little homework yes. look at you know look credentials at credentials and, you know, the placement they, records yes. because there are lots out there some yes. are fraudulent yes. some are outdated right. so just do your little and today with google and internet everything is, everything possible. is possible you know it's yes. at your fingertips right. so i think you have no excuse not to know not to know yes. not to know yes. isn't it yes so uh, that is your parting advice to young people not to lose heart not to lose hope there's always you know one door closes 10 windows open yes
and I think what they should be open for that there's a lot of hiring which would happen from colleges and institutions, okay. which was not happening earlier. So these uh, kids have a lot of opportunities there because employers want to hire as early as possible and as in fresh large mind numbers, and yes. large number and okay. see that okay we'll train these hundred kids and if 50 meet my requirement we'll have these 50 moving ahead and remaining 50 can be uh, you know asked to leave or whatever so that's one thing personal branding is very important which is now coming up in a big way that these kids have to be different from the 10 others sitting in the yes, interview yes. room. How to stand and out. How so to that stand is out. So, so that, that 10 minutes of interview is very, very important. So I think the parting uh, the line should be that that first impression that you need to make, you will never get a second chance True. to make that first impression. So take all your interviews very seriously, go prepared, go well dressed, and go with confidence. Yes. I think that's what is uh, required. Yes. Uh, thank you. So with that, uh, we wrap up today's show here. Thank you so much Savita for coming to Career Cafe and uh, you know uh, easing the pressure and tension of all our young viewers who are looking at right. employment because education ho ya na ho employment is the final it's goal the final. and so if, yes. uh, I mean this gives so much hope to um, all the young people out there do send us your feedback and uh, queries at Career Cafe LSTV at gmail.com Next week on Career Cafe, we we'll look at yet another super career. But before that, let me leave you with one of my favorite quotes. Life is 10% what you make it and 90% how you take it. So bye for now and be your best.